On this slide, I put what we did for the left side of the equation. So now, for the right side of the equation, first we can consider that we evaluated the term on the left side at position i. And so we also need to evaluate the right side of the equation at position i. So I'm going to put here you know, that bar with the i to indicate that we're going to evaluate it at position i. If we do this, then it means that the in space, the EZs must be located at position i. So we would have an EZ here, and one grid cell over, we'd have another EZ, and so forth. So if we put this together with the HYs that we've positioned for the left side of the equation, we put those at half integer indices so that we could determine the partial derivative with respect to space at position i. So now we have those at half integer spatial indices. Now to evaluate the partial time derivative on the right side of this equation, we need to define a time step increment. Let's call that dt. dt is the amount of time between adjacent solutions of ez. Since using digital computers, we can only solve for ez at discrete moments in time. For convenience, since the EZs are positioned at integer spatial indices, i, i plus 1, i plus 2, and so forth, let's also solve for the EZ components at integer time steps. So, and we're going to use n to denote the time step number. And that's also the index in time. If we evaluate EZ at integer time steps, n, n plus 1, and so forth, this implies that we might need to evaluate the HYs at half integer time steps, n plus a half, n plus 1.5, and so forth. We'll see about that. So we're finding that we need to keep track of both time and space. That is, when we refer to a field component in our model, we need to know the time step number n, and also what grid index, i, uh, that corresponds to that field component. Since we've been using subscripts for the spatial index, i, let's use superscripts to denote the time step number. So this means the left side of Ampere's law, we're going to now write it as h, y, i plus 0.5, and we're going to assume here that we're going to have also at half integer time steps. So I'm going to put plus 0.5 there, hy minus at i minus 0.5, and n plus 0.5. So both of these hy's are at the same moment in time, and we're dividing here by delta x. So now that we've chosen a position and time step at which to solve the left side of this equation. The left side is being evaluated at position i and time step n plus 0.5. Now we need to solve the right side of the equation at the same position and the same moment in time. So that means this at, uh, we had said earlier it's at position i. Now we're going to say it's at position i, but also at time step n plus 0.5. And now we can apply central differencing going a half of a time step in each direction around n plus 0.5 we get ez position i n plus 1 minus ez i at position n and those are separated by one full time step delta t. Putting all this together Ampere's law now looks like this. And I could probably add here and at time step n plus 0.5. So we've finished discretizing the 1D form of Ampere's law that includes a second order accurate algorithm for evaluate, evaluating the partial derivatives. Before we go any further, let's draw out in more detail the discretized grid we've created in order to solve these partial derivatives. Can you sketch the 1D grid, like this one here, but one that also includes the location and the orientation of the field components? 
sketch the grid as it looks in space, like the one shown here, and separately make a diagram of what the updating looks like in time, and label as much as you can.